trying to get some female energy up here with Chris Vetch talking about cohabiting. No, not cohabitation. Now, I asked her, can you cohabitate in cohousing? And I assume she'll answer that question in her presentation. So, Chris describes herself as a dog lover, Spanish maven, dancing diva, hot yoga mama, a high devotee, and saucy CEO of Exodus Moving and Storage. She also walked the half marathon with us, as well as with my welcome buddy this morning. She totally rocks. Let's put our hands together for her. It's a group of individuals who are interested in living in community. In Colorado, we have 12 co-housing communities, and in Fort Collins, we have two. I live in Gray Rock, where we have 30 households. Uh, we're a fairly diverse group. We've got young, old, we've got couples. Yes, we do cohabitate. Um, we have singles, we've got families, we've got folks who are business owners, homemakers, and professors. Runs the whole gamut. There is no requirement to get into co-housing. <laughs> And really, people put their money where their values are, because it costs more to pay for the same house in co-housing. A lot of folks don't know that. And it's real important to know that co-housing is made up of both the social and the physical aspect of the structure, if you will. And the structure that you'll see up here is that we've got three to four houses connected. They kind of look like townhomes, but they're the same size as regular homes. We have parking on the perimeter. And then in the center, we've got this green space with a playground. The common house is our biggest shared resource. And in our common house, it's way cooler than a clubhouse because we've got a kid's room with a tree house. We've also got a kitchen that's stepped out with all the dishes and spices you could ever want. It's also got an office, an exercise room, um, oh, a guest room, so that if, if you can't fit all your guests in your house, you can use the common house. Uh, we also host all kinds of events, including Great Rock House concerts, which are a blast. We recently had Justin Roth come and visit us. Uh, we also share a lot of other big ticket items. So we have like a car trailer and a barbecue and a copier, so not everyone has to own one. So it's nice from a resource standpoint. We also don't mind borrowing shirt from one another or a croquet set or someone's bicycle. We share a lot. Uh, we like to consider ourselves somewhat living on the earth uh, lightly. Uh, our homes are on five acres, and then we've got 10 acres of open space. We do a lot of composting, recycling, and we try to be very conscientious about our water usage. Uh, gardens. We've got gardens. We've got great gardens um, where folks have their individual plots, which is great because then you get to talk to your fellow gardener while you're gardening, share you know tools and tips and that kind of thing, and also share the fruits of your labor. Uh, we have chickens. We love our chickens. They produce farm fresh eggs. We also participate in a raw milk co-op and get raw milk from the farmer who's down the road. And I have neighbors who's a beekeeper, so we get incredible great rock honey. And then. There we go. Um, we share our talents, everything from fire dancing to Spanish to diversity training. We also uh, house sit, pet sit, babysit for one another, and uh, carpooling is also another great benefit. Um, we uh, have all sorts of activities throughout the year. We do talent shows, we do gingerbread house making, we have a Thanksgiving leftover dinner, we do Easter egg hunts. I mean, you name it, if there's an activity, we probably do it. So, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my next door neighbor. Halloween's our biggest, <laughs> our biggest uh, holiday out of the year. Um, the adults get dressed up as well as the kids. We have a big chili cook-off. We do a bonfire. Um, we also have like a haunted tour of the grounds and just have a great time. Community meals. In co-housing, there's a lot of community meals. In our community, you can participate in three meals. My family participates in one. Uh, give me a sec. We've got... Um, so when we cook, we cook for 50 people. And it's really great because when I show up with my family on the times that I don't have to cook, the meal is ready, prepared, clean, the whole kit and caboodle. And uh, we always say a community meal is a happy meal, because it's easy. Um, community meetings, we have those once a month to deal with the business of our community. Uh, we make our decisions via consensus decision making and also through a proposal process. We say the most difficult issues are the P's, which are parking, pets, policies, uh, and painting. This is my pet, 
She um, is an outdoor cat. We're not allowed to have outdoor cats, which is the reason why she has this bib on, so that she can't kill birds, because she's an avid bird hunter, which doesn't coincide with my birder neighbor. <laughs> Uh, we also do work days. We have three work days a year uh, to take care of the grounds and to take care of the common house. That's pretty common co-housing where you make a commitment to volunteer within the community. And we include the youth, we include the children, and we always make sure to celebrate at the end. Probably one of the best benefits to co-housing is it's a really safe place for our kids. Everyone really knows everyone else's kids. And it's kind of like back in the day when I was a kid where you've got young and old playing together, doing sharks and minnows, soccer. Like, you name it, they go out and agree and have a great time. And then really in conclusion, co-housing is an incredible way to live in community. And I hope you got to know a little bit more about co-housing. Thank you.